power, life and death, policy and politics. 2,966 people died on the 9-11 hijackings, including the hijackers. 2,403 people died in Pearl Harbor. Those two events provide deep scars on the American consciousness. This week, something happened that is understood to risk significantly more loss of life over time. And none of them will receive posthumous medals or monuments in Manhattan. 50,000 cases of asthma, 15,000 cases of upper respiratory problems, as many as 1,400 premature deaths annually by 2030. These are the projections from the administration's own analysis. Let's talk to David Arkush, Managing Director, the Public Citizens Climate Program. He joins us now to talk about this, which somehow is not at the top of the front page of the Fox News website or in a running Chiron and the bottom of the screen on the Fox News TV. David, hello. <laughs> hey there, Jeff. And thanks for having me on. What do we need to know, man? Well, uh, you mean you covered some of the most important things. Uh, it is uh, right. So Trump has has proposed uh, a rule to roll back and change uh, the Obama era clean power plan. And this is a rule that. Uh, aimed to, or you know, still on the books technically, but this is a rule that um, the intent was to reduce carbon pollution um, principally um, by reducing the use of coal. Um, and it set goals of reducing um, carbon pollution um, by 32% lower than 2005 levels by 2030. And it was actually too weak. Um, and, and didn't really, you know, it was in large part codifying some trends uh, that were already happening, maybe pushing them along a little further. Uh, and we need much more assertive action to, to stave off you know, catastrophic climate change. Um, but it was the right type of policy, the right direction to go. And of course, the targets could have been strengthened. It also had a lot of flexibility for states to figure out how to make to meet the targets. And um, what Trump did this week was uh, his EPA, Andrew Wheeler, the head, who's a coal lobbyist, uh, they're proposing to replace this rule with one that would do two things. One is uh, not regulate carbon at all directly by the EPA, instead kick it to the states and say, do whatever you want in terms of regulating carbon. And two, uh, open a giant loophole for existing coal plants, which is right now when you make major upgrades to a coal plant, you have to come into compliance with modern pollution control technologies, uh, and that's really expensive. And so rather than do that, a lot more coal plants have been shutting down. So, in fact, uh, it's not just that this is sort of rolling back a rule that's going to be helping, that, that would have helped uh, curb climate pollution and other forms of pollution from coal-fired power plants. It actually is probably going to make things worse and actually make more coal plants uh, stay open than would have otherwise. What is the, I was, uh, actually, before I ask what's the justification for it, I mean, I know the justification is it's August, they think they can get away with it, and the, he's got coal executives wanting it, and it allows him to go to West Virginia and say, I'm for coal, and screw Obama. So I get that, those parts. What needs to still happen? What are the chances to block this, or is the only chance to block this for Democrats somehow to get the presidency or the presidency and both chambers of Congress to pass a law? Uh, I think there there are good chances to block this. So what still has to happen, the agency has to go through a process. This is just a proposal. Um, before it's finalized, the agency has to take public comment. It's supposed to do lots of studies and analysis uh, to justify the rule, and then it can finalize the rule. And then, of course, you know, people can sue over the rule if it's illegal or if the agency didn't do the do its job right um, in terms of the rulemaking process. Um, the agency has proposed that to, to have only a 60-day comment period. That is, you know far too short. I mean, some rules have a comment period that short, but but it is um, exceedingly rare for a rule this complex uh, to have a comment period that short. I think 
the Obama administration. So they're trying to ram me to put it to use fewer words. They're trying to ram it through by not getting enough chance for analysis, <laughs> right? right? That's, a, that's, that's the technical term. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the Obama. I can't even remember if it was one year or two years that the, before they finalized it, but uh, from when they proposed it to when they finalized it. Usually, you know, with a rule this complicated, you do a lot more work. You have a bunch of hearings in public. You but, but, I, I, but let me interrupt now. you. The when net neutrality came up, there yep. was a comment period, not as lengthy as prior. There was a comment period. But part of me was like, listen, what determined how they're going to decide is the president that appointed them, not the letter that I write. How are you feeling about this EPA? Do you think that if there is enough pressure applied by human beings who don't want 1,400 deaths a year, that they would actually change course? Uh, no, but I do think that... Um you know, obviously, they're very result-driven. They know what they want to do, which is enrich coal billionaires, even if it means killing you know, thousands of Americans, tens of thousands of Americans, and destroying the world with climate pollution. Uh, but See, that's, um, that just seems like the beginning and the end. That's the thing we ought to be yelling. That's the thing. We, we had a caller calling yesterday. He said, listen, uh, listen, you fluffy heart. That's me calling my, myself, not him calling me that. He said, you know, it, eventually you're going to have to figure out a way to win in states that have two senators, even with small populations. You can't just focus on, you know, your hometown of Portland. And, and I agree. It seems to me, however, even people in Nebraska don't want thousands of people to die. Now, that, that's absolutely right. I mean, if you look at the at the polling, you know, it's it's narrow majorities in a place like, say, West Virginia or, or Montana, uh, where there's a lot of coal production. But even there, a majority of people actually, you know, want regulations on coal-fired power plants, want carbon uh, regulated as a pollutant. Um, you know, they they believe in global warming. They think it's real. They want solutions. They support a transition to renewables. You know, even in sort of the heart of coal country. Right. So how do we get the word out there, man? People. How do we how do we get the word out? Because when when public citizen, so if I, if I don't have it wrong, public citizen is one of the groups that that uh, Ralph Nader started during his hero days in the 70s, and the uh, and and back in the day, the media was different, and so was Congress. How does a group like public citizen now? And yeah, you come on this show, but how do we get the word to folks? Because Fox News sure isn't covering it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, w one of the things we are doing is um, we're actually pushing for broader, new, you know, broader media coverage, right? Yeah. I, I, mean, I appreciate Thank the you. work you're doing here. I appreciate all the public radio is doing, uh, but but we need more, right? We need to, this needs to be a mainstream issue, like you said when you were in the intro talking about you know events like uh, like um, the 9/11 attacks. I mean, climate change is is a threat as big, bigger, frankly, than World War II was to the United States. Yeah. Right? Imagine what media coverage was like during World War II. No, I was talking to an author. Stories. She's going down to tour Antarctica. She got a grant to go visit Antarctica, which is not even in this country, and yeah. the and and to check out the piece of a a glacier, some mega glacier. I already forget its name. That if it melts, if it breaks off and melts, adds it, it just that one piece of ice adds 15 feet to sea level around the world. There yeah. are yeah. islands that 15 feet means they don't exist anymore. Absolutely. There is, and, and, and what people, most, a lot of people don't realize is that this is far more urgent than people, at least in the U.S., think. Like, this is, we're talking about catastrophic outcomes as soon as this, you know, the end of this century. Um, and, and at the same time, a lot of people don't realize that we mostly know how to fix this. And so you combine those things, and I think, you know. If we know scientifically, do, but do we know politically? Oh, well, that's right. But I think part of the answer to the politics is, is frankly, getting the word out about, yeah. about this issue, right? Uh, it, that's, you know, an existential threat to our country that we know how to fix is the type of issue that we solve. We will rise to that, uh, to that challenge, and we will meet it. And uh, the problem right now is that's not, the, that's not the shape of the problem to most people. Most people are still stuck in this kind of old mode of thinking. Uh, you know, climate change is this far-off, distant thing. Maybe it's going to hurt people in a couple hundred years. The problem is mostly sea level, level rise, and we can probably build, you know, walls or something to keep it out. Um, and uh, and we don't know really know how to fix it anyway. Yep. And, and, and that's da what's just all wrong now. David Arkish, the website is citizen.org. Thanks for being with us.